mean, you know, I, I think I'll say this to give Doc Rivers this bit of grace. We said it last time we had this coach's conversation. I even think coaches are sick of getting the full brunt of the force. For like sure. they just are for getting yeah. fired, for getting blamed, for, you know, players being able to come out and spin this revision as history about certain things. Um, you know, I, I, although it is an excuse, I totally agree with what Austin Rivers said. Now they were up in the bubble, but I totally agree. Especially after Lou Will comes out and says, yeah, we didn't want to be there. Like a collective of us. We didn't want to be there. We wasn't focused. I was trying to get to the strip club as fast as possible. Y'all was locked down. Atlanta wasn't locked down. So like, I I didn't want to be here playing no basketball. I can play. I didn't play basketball my whole life. Um, So I think that there's some credibility to that. And right. Doc Rivers shouldn't get hundred percent of the blame, but and I think it's it, it is hard to do and it is tiring after a long time where somebody just blames you, blames you, blames you. You know, now you want to flip it and just try to take as much off of you as possible. But the middle ground exists. Doc, you hold some blame. Players, you also hold some blame. But with that state, if that statement is true, that means you have to acknowledge that you do hold some blame. Um, but Damo's right. I, I like going back and rewriting that history, boy. I ain't gonna lie. I, I told him about SGA. Not going to lie, I told him. <laughs> I told him about SGA. Um, so it is what it is. But even even in that press conference where he was, like, detailing his history, I know we were we were laughing at the time, but ultimately I think what, what he was trying to get away, I think he just worded it very poorly was, yes, like, there is blame for me, and I understand why y'all are blaming me, but damn, it's like y'all don't look at any of the good shit that I did. So I think that that's his overarching point yeah. that was missed, but which I do agree. I do agree, you know. You, you, a lot of people, especially when you underachieve every single year, the focus is always on, like when you choke. But you know, pe- people never talk about the first three games when you were dominating, you leading and coaching this team to a sixty-win team perennially, which, in my opinion, is still a, a sign of a good coach. Maybe just not a championship coach. He can still be overrated, but to me, Doc is still a good coach at the end of the day. Hot take, but. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, th- I don't damn know. I don't know. Yeah, I- I'm ahead, sorry. Man. Damn all that. Damn all that. One credit for what you do right. Shit, you get that every once a year when you meet up with the 08 Celtics to have your annual dinner. You get that's when you get your flowers, buddy. Other than that, your career is. I-, I promise you, no one just talks about when Jerry West won. They if they talk about Jerry West, they're gonna bring up the non losses. That gets brought up. You talk about it because it's a glaring issue in your legacy. Of course, your legacy isn't only the underachievements, but when you stack the roster of players that you have coached or had the potential, you talked your way out of Tim Duncan, buddy. Like, I don't know what to tell you. You talked your way out. You messed up you getting Tim Duncan in Orlando. So if you... That's crazy. That's too much, Damo. That that part is too much. Yeah, It's not. But (laughs) if you... If you stack up the roster and the talent of players that you had compared to a lot of these other coaches, man, stop it. We're not about to sit here and just look at the good. Look at the good. No, nigga, because there's a lot of bad here. It's one thing if it's disparity between the good and the bad. You got a lot of good and a lot of bad. Nigga, you got a little bit of good and a whole lot of bad. I don't know what you want to We'll talk about a little bit. How about that? We'll we'll talk about all your little achievements. Not little achievements. I don't want to say your little achievements. Championship. We'll talk about your achievements. A little bit more than we have before, but we're but gonna that, that, that's all he's saying about. though. That's that's my thing. That's but, all he's saying. I, he's not saying to just talk about the good shit now. He's just like, yo, acknowledge it. It's not all bad. That's all he's saying. But so. that's my thing though. When we talk about Doc, I ain't gonna lie. Unless I'm mistaken, and it's it's like I somewhat disagree with like not what everybody's saying, but just a little, just a wee bit. Because I feel like we do talk about what Doc does well. The narrative around Doc Doc Rivers is that he can win you 50 games. He can win you 60 games, but you can't trust that man to contain the lead. You can't trust the man to win when he's favored. And you can't, hell, you damn well can't trust him to come back when he's not favored. And you, you just like come postseason time, he's one of those ones. I, th- I think everybody knows that when your team hires Doc Rivers, you're likely trying to win a championship and he's going to be able to get you to the dance. I don't think people think that Doc Rivers can't get you to the playoffs. I think the narrative with Doc Rivers is once you get to the playoffs, you're going to you're just going to sw- fucking wet the bed for no reason. I mean, that's pretty consistent with his whole career, multiple 50 win, 55 win seasons, and he can't get it done. I think 
I think even in situations like the bubble where me and Omar disagree there, I, I ain't going to lie, man. There's some level of coaching that goes into, hey, getting your players in the right mindset. You couldn't get them boys to lock in for a game. I can't do it. I'm not going to lie. I, I hear them. I know it's definitely true. If Lou Williams himself are going to talk about it, if J.J. Reddick, Austin Rivers, I know they weren't necessarily there, but, like, you know what I'm saying? I get it's true, but, like, man, well, but, but y'all got to lock in, bro. Y'all got to lock in. What we're saying is, say, you tell me to lock in, see if I lock in. I didn't been in that position. I mean, it's, it's not really all his fault, but when, yes, when he plays a part in that, and he plays a part in three one lead and another three one lead and two one lead. I ain't got going on with Milwaukee. It's just it's too many times where you're at fault here. Where I'm gonna go? Oh yeah, for sure. Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, um, who who else? Um, well, I'm not gonna blame that fucking Clippers team. Paul Pierce, KG, all these players for sure. I don't know why the fuck when it's Doc Rivers' names. We don't just go out the way and be like, yo, you blew the like what the fuck up with you? Like we only talk about Doc Rivers. Kawhi blew a 3 1 league. Nobody nobody liked talking about that. But um at the same time, Doc, you you is the common nigga. I ain't gonna lie. I think I, I think what Bezos is saying is 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 right. He just wants you to say the full story, which you know, and, and we'll talk about this in a little bit too, right? Like right after this Kenya Martin George Carl thing, is mm-hmm. that everybody has narratives bias and specifically depending on where you get your sports analysis from you, they don't talk about the good a little bit they they don't talk about you know they they they, they are strictly gonna stay yes, on the bad. On live television that's true so i just i just want to make that clear um let's tune in to some more coach hate um with a friend of the show king you Oh, force him scared of them. Well, fuck George Hall. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Let's get that out of the way. Like, fuck him and the horse he rode in on. Like, um. Type shit. If he's not writing this, then somebody is. And whoever's writing, they need to fucking chill. Um, like, talking about somebody bringing up old shit. Like you the only like motherfucker that wrote a book. <laughs> like all this started, didn't nobody have nothing to say about dude till you wrote the book. And we was living our lives, man. Like I, when I found out about the bullshit book, I was at the gas pump getting ready to take my daughter to Disney for her birthday. I would call that first thing in the morning about this shit. So bringing up old shit, like no, bro. And so yeah, me and Melo was there the whole time. Like we was there when George got the job, right? We started the year we had Jeff Bisdell, like that that didn't go well. Um, he was there the year before. They hired Michael Cooper. Uh, we didn't do well under Coop. Bring George in. Um, yeah, he had a reputation of I'm saying winning and just a few other stops he had been. But also you also heard like just the rumblings around about who he is and how his players and him interact or lack thereof. So you hear that stuff, but How can a guy that was in the third pick in the draft that should have won rookie of the year that led his team to the playoffs as a rookie, and you come in in his second year, how is that guy overrated when you get there? These are facts. This is real time, dog. I was there. So you ain't got to look that shit up, Gil. Okay. I was there. Okay, okay. Right? No, I was there. Right? Well, was in the second year when George got the job. Twenty, If 20 games in when George got the job. Led his team to the playoffs the year before as a rookie. And most of the basketball world thinks that LeBron James got Carmelo Anthony rookie of the year trophy at home. Just from optics, the team won. Western Conference was a lot harder. You okay, brother? Oh, shit. He coughed <laughs> Um, We don't have to harp on this because he just sounded like he finished just going on George Carl. But I just want to just... So okay. the, the the subject is Carmelo Anthony being overrated. I hope it's no, not no, the no, best fifteen. No, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't have to get into that. I just I just wanted we to can. Put no. I wanted oh. to put that out there and and just a, a quick basketball aside. Have y'all seen uh, what other friend of the show Scottie Pippen is doing? Him and Luke Longley and Horace Grant. Ah, oh. the tour. Yes. Please no. Love it. Please. The, the, I love it. The theme is. Please no. Telling the full story. Mm. The, the, the theme is telling all sides. The theme is getting in front of the narratives or being able to tell your truths. 
I'm and scared. not letting the 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 new media, the the, the NBA general. of the world, or the yeah the, the the media sphere tell the story. So Scottie Pippen, Horace Grant, and Luke Longley are embarking on a no bull tour to share their perspective on the Last Dance story and their experiences playing with the Bulls in the '90s. Quote: A lot of us, a lot of people want to ask us about that bullshit documentary. Uh, mm, on time, oh no! Like yeah. Oh shit! Well, as you know me, I speak my mind, and it's going to be a no tour. <laughs> Believe me, I I tell you this: the X factor in the first three and the second three, I would have kicked Dennis Rodman. <laughs> oh my god! Oh. In that, yeah. <laughs> come out and. Uh, Get the tickets and uh, you hear a lot. Yeah. Well. Wow. Oh no, this is gonna go one of one way, <laughs> and this is not gonna be a pretty ride. It's gonna make for some reactions. It's mm. not gonna be a pretty ride. Oh no, I am. It, though, I am terrified. I am terrified. Nation back in chat. There's so much to talk about, man. <laughs> pivot in. Pivot, in. pivot back in. Pivot back in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pivot back. You got no one to go out and come back in. I mean, it's okay. Oh my! That's why I pivot for it. You can always go back. 